Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you how to use the brand new lens blur effect in Lightroom Classic. This is super cool. Basically it uses artificial intelligence to analyze your photo and figure out what should be in focus versus out of focus, your subject versus the background. And then it applies a realistic lens blur. This is the most realistic lens blur that I have ever seen from any program. It works incredibly well and you can refine your results, giving you a ton of control. Today we're going to show you exactly how to use it. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Lightroom Classic. So here we are in Lightroom Classic. You can see we've got four different images with our subjects and backgrounds that are kind of in focus. And you can see the backgrounds just kind of compete for attention with our subjects. So let's go ahead and start with our first image here. By the way, you can download all these on flurn.com totally free so you can follow along. So we're gonna click on our first image here. Let's go to our develop module right up here at the very top, D for develop. And then over here, you're gonna see lens blur and you can see it's in early access. Now, if you haven't updated your version of Lightroom Classic, be sure you do that within Creative Cloud. So let's go ahead and open up our lens blur. There we go. The first thing you wanna do is just hit apply right here where it says apply and you can see it's analyzing your image. This is actually using artificial intelligence and boom, it applied our lens blur. You can see it works incredibly well. Now here I can change the amount of lens blur that I want with this slider here, okay? I have the option to change my focal range. So if I wanted, for instance, my subject to be blurry, which I don't know why you'd wanna do that most of the time, you'd want your background to be blurry, but you can change your focal range, which is incredibly cool. And it analyzes your image. These are just JPEGs. It analyzes your image using artificial intelligence and data points. You don't need to have a special depth camera or anything like that. Now you have a few different options for your type of bokeh. So you can kind of click through and decide what type of look you would like. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. And then you have this boost option, which will like kind of enhance the brightness of your bokeh in the background. Super, super cool. Now here's where it gets a little more interesting. You can see like right here between my subject's arm and her face, it didn't actually apply that blur. So it did a pretty good job. But what we want to do is we're just going to scroll down where it says visualize depth. Let's go ahead and click that on. Okay, and now I can see it actually figured out what should be in focus versus out of focus, but this is the area that it, th it thought should be in focus, but we actually wanna refine that a little bit. Okay, so here's how we do it. We have our refine panel. By default, it might be closed. Go ahead and open up your refine panel, and then you can decide what should be in focus versus blur. So let's go ahead and click on blur, and then as I hover over my image, I basically have the brush tool, okay? I can hit command plus a couple times to zoom in, and then I can basically just paint. You can use your open and close brackets to make your brush larger and smaller. But as I paint, I'm basically telling this area of the photo, hey, you should be out of focus. So I'm painting in the focal range. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off visualize depth so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. There we go. It's just gonna take a second to load. But now you can see as I paint, check this out, I'm seeing it in real time. I can see what it's doing and it's a basically allowing that blur to happen in the background. So this is a really good way to go in and refine your results just in case it misses an area. It's basically using the same technology as Photoshop for select subject. Like there, I just painted on her face a little bit, no big deal. We're gonna click here on focus and then I'm gonna define the focus area. Let's make my brush smaller. You can use your open and close brackets to do so. And then I'm just basically painting right here and saying, okay, her face should be in focus. So if it's not perfect, no big deal. You can go in and refine it and make sure your results are actually looking good. Let's hit Command minus a couple times. And there we go. We have a really cool out of focus effect. Now it does auto mask by default. You don't have to click that on, but let's go ahead. I'm gonna just close up my refine. There we go. And now again, that everything is looking good. I can change my bokeh amount. There we go. And maybe this effect was a little too strong. Maybe I'll go with like a little bit more of a standard effect and kind of bring that up. This looks really, really good. It, like, honestly, this is the best blur effect that I've seen of any program, much better than the blur effects in Photoshop when it comes to lens blur. Let's hit G to get back to our grid view and take a look at our second image. So now we have our subject. Actually, her feet are touching the ground and that should be in focus. Our entire subject plane should be in focus and then it should get out of focus as it moves in the background. So whereas before we had our subject and then no transition and then the background, now we have our subject, but we need to have a transition to the background. It should gradually get out of focus. So let's see, see how this tool handles it. We're gonna go to develop module again. And then here within our lens blur, just make sure you hit apply. There we go. 
and it's going to analyze your photo and it nailed it, honestly. Let's click on this visualize depth just so you can see what it does. So it's selected your subject out. So the yellow area is what is going to be in focus. And then basically it applied a gradient filter moving backwards. So the stuff where your subject, the plane where your subject actually lives, where they are in the photo, that's gonna be in focus. And then as you can see, it gets purple. That's basically denotating that it's out of focus. Okay, and then it did basically like a select object in the background with this fence and this plant. And then everything that beh that's behind that, it's deeming like that should be way out of focus. So let's go ahead and turn off, it, this tool is actually really impressive. Let's turn off visualize depth and see how it actually looks. I'm just gonna crank this up. So we can see it's keeping our subject in focus. It's doing a really, really good job. The steps, this transition looks natural and we have realistic bokeh in the background. Now I think just in general, as you crank these effects up and up and up, if I get close to my subject, let's just zoom in here to our subject. Okay, we're gonna see like, yeah, it works pretty well. This area is like, mm, it got a little bit confused. Of course, we can go into a refine and I can say, I'm gonna click on blur and then we're gonna hit command plus a couple times and then you can hold the space bar down and kind of move around your image. So I can basically say like, okay, you know what? This area actually should be blurred, but here where we're starting to see some hair and stuff like that, that's just gonna get a little bit confused, honestly where we have hair. So you kind of, you, you're playing a little bit of a, there we go, of a of a game here when you have like fine details such as hair. And it, all in all this tool, I would say works really, really well. This is the only place it's gonna fall a little bit short is when you have like fine detail in your foreground, like hair and things like that. So for this, what I'm gonna do is basically like, I'm gonna do my best to try to say like, okay, all that should be blurred. And the result that we're getting overall is gonna be decent, I would say. Uh, still like all around super impressed with this tool. Um, obviously it's doing automatic selection of my subject. There we go, let's go ahead and paint that in. And I'm just using the trackpad on my laptop. So you don't need any special tools or anything like that to do this. There we go. All right, so with this hair, I'm, I don't know, like you don't have a ton of options other than like kind of cut the hair off, honestly, which I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just hit undo. Here's what I would actually suggest. I'm just gonna hit undo. Oh, I hit undo too many times. All right, so here's what I would actually suggest doing is just taking your blur amount and don't go so strong with it. You know, like reduce that a little bit. There we go. And then, you know, maybe we wanna just like bring a little bit of these flowers back in focus and things like that. So. You can see if we do have like a ton of detail, yeah, this is this is really where the tool kind of like uh, has a little bit of trouble. It's not, you know, not the biggest deal. It's gonna get better in time. But yeah, if we do have fine detail with our subject like hair, it's, it's just gonna get a little tripped up. Overall, it did pretty good. Like on this side, I feel like it did a great job over here. Uh, it was just really like this hair here. And again, like if you wanted to like select out the hair and just remove that from your selection, you could do that. But I think with these tiny tools, like kind of the best results that I see is when you don't go crazy with the blur effect. Like, you know, just a little bit of blur, there we go. And that's gonna work just a lot better. And then you kind of just, I don't know. I, I can't ignore this area, honestly, now that I've seen it, I, I can't. <laughs> I was gonna tell you just like, hey, ignore that. I, I can't, I, I can't, I personally can't. Now, for your focal range, you can just click on your person, it's gonna find the person, or you can actually use an area and like select what you would like in focus, okay? Which is gonna do a decent job most of the time, but I usually just click on the people and that does a little bit better of a job. All right, so we've seen how this tool actually does work incredibly well, especially with depth. Um, and we're starting to see its limitations, fine detail in the foreground. That's a limitation of the tool. So let's go to our next image here. There we go. And we can see this is an image that like the subject and the background I just like don't have a lot of uh, separation here. This happens a lot, especially if you're photographing with like a, you know, a nice digital camera with like a, you know, 50 millimeter 1.4 or something, you're gonna have a lot of depth of field. Like your sub background's gonna be out of focus. You're, like this video that I'm in right now, like I'm actually shooting with a 50 millimeter 1.4. So like my background's out of focus, I'm in focus. But if you're shooting with an iPhone or something like that, you're not gonna get that. Everything's gonna be compressed, everything's gonna be in focus. And that's really what this tool is for. So that's like what's going on here. So let's click on our develop module here. We're gonna go to apply our lens blur here. And there we go. Immediately you see our subject is knocked out. Our background is out of focus and it helps out a ton. 
I can go to visualize depth. You can see our subject is in focus. Again, we didn't have a ton of fine detail here with our subject and our hair and things like that. So the tool is gonna to work a lot better. And we have this yellow area is in focus and then it's gonna gradually go out of focus as it hits the background. There we go. And you can see this works incredibly well. We don't have to go super, like kind of with all automatic tools, in my opinion, like if we crank that up, it starts to look like a miniature. So, you know, you can keep these effects subtle, but like even this, where we can see the difference between our subject and our background, they're almost the same exact focus. So even just a little bit of out of focus, like a little bl bit of blur amount actually winds up making a huge difference in these images. All right, we got one more here. Let's go ahead and check this couple. This is another great example of like basically everything in this image is completely in focus, probably taken with a you know, camera phone or something like that. Let's go ahead and go to our lens blur and then click on apply. There we go. It's gonna find our subjects, find the background, and then boom, this bokeh effect really looks good. This effect in general works very, very well for night photos. You can see like it applied that bokeh. Let's just turn that off and back on again. It's like actually kind of stunning how good of a job that really did on the images. And of course you can change your blur amount. You can change all these settings that we took out earlier. I can change where is actually blurred in the photo. Okay, just in case it gets the blur range a little bit incorrect. And of course you can, you can paint it in, which is nice. But if you have like really fine detail like hair, uh, we can see that that's just gonna be a little bit more difficult to do. But all in all, the feature is incredibly powerful. Like all these AI features, it's just gonna get better and better over time. Like figuring out where the hair is and blurring behind it. Th those features are just gonna continue to get better. These artificial models, they improve at a really, really fast rate. And in my opinion, this is still, even though it does have a li little bit of limitations, like with hair and stuff like that, this is still one of the most fantastic tools to come in Lightroom Classic in a long, long time. And I think we're just starting to see these new AI tools start to roll out in Lightroom Classic, which I am personally super thankful for. So let me know what you guys would think of this new AI lens blur. Is this something you would actually use in your photos? For me, it's really great if you have like smartphone pictures, maybe some subjects you just wanna kick that background a little bit out of focus, that looks fantastic. If you wanted a really shallow, shallow depth of field, I would probably still recommend shooting with like a, you know, a camera with a lens that has a shallow depth of field. But in my opinion, these features are super, super cool. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget you can download all these sample images on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, it's a part of our brand new Lightroom Classic 2024 tutorial. We show you how to do everything from organization, culling through, choosing your favorite images, and how to use AI masking to improve your image quality in Lightroom Classic for 2024. It's available right now on flurn.com. It's a part of our subscription and you get every single other tutorial we've ever made on flurn. Check it out. Follow the link right down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.